Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. It could be argued that laughter is only medicinal when the underlying ailment has been dealt with. Other than that, it is merely a hallucinogen deceiving the senses, theater of the absurd. It was in the wake of senseless killings in the Taraba Benue Axis in early 2018. Blames were flying everywhere, accusations and counter accusations, all eating up the polity. And suddenly the news broke that a snake had swallowed 36 million at the Jambo Fist. The headlines started buzzing with this magical tale by Moonlight. Comments, articles, interviews filled the social and other media. And for the following three weeks, the hottest news in the Nigerian media was the snake that swallowed money. As if the story was not dramatic enough, a senator was reported to have stormed the Jambo Fist with snake charmers. We were distracted from an important matter of state involving wanton killings of citizens, and we embraced the drama. If you ask me today how the snake swallowed money business ended, I don't know. Do you? How about the soap opera involving a senator who hid bribe money under his cap? Do you know how it ended? I don't. And I'll bet neither do most Nigerians. However, the drama was exciting while it lasted. But that was how far it went. Is it still a crime in Nigeria to receive bribe? That matter, as with many others, died a natural death, never to show up in the headlines again. Did you watch the video of the grave accusation by the former DG of SEC against the chairman of a NAS committee? The Honorable collected Esther code and first class ticket from an agency was meant to provide oversight for, to attend the foreign training. He did not attend the training nor refund the ticket or Esther code. He was on live TV. And the Honorable must have been stung by the revelation as he grabbed the nearest bottle of water and drained it. I guess to calm down. We enjoyed the drama and it was on the front of pages of newspapers for some days. And that was it. What happened to the Honorable Member? Was he held to account? I don't know. Do you? Fast forward to the recent Off Your Mic series. The closing season was particularly hilarious, quite dramatic. Even a fainted man knew to pull out hands from his mouth in these days of COVID-19. I know you did not miss the icing on the cake as the minister treated us to an exciting afternoon of entertainment, which ended with the now popular off your mic. After all the drama, so what? Were the thieves of the people's commonwealth be held to account? Are we going to fundamentally restructure the legal and institutional framework for that agency? If history is anything to go by, the drama has calmed down, and that is where it all ends. Another drama will come and replace it. Did you hear that it is now possible for a bank to mistakenly transfer 500 million to an account in error, mm -hmm. and neither the rightful or wrongful beneficiary nor the bank knew for years after? Ladies and gentlemen, get your tickets, buy your popcorn and drinks. The new season of EFCC series is about to start. We are swarmed in the drama of critical matters of state and not the substance. We lose focus on the, of the heart of the matter. And when the drama ends, the subject matters die with it. My advocacy is that as a people, the media, civil society organizations, opposition party, elder statesmen, you and I, we owe a duty to keep eyes on the ball and ensure that the failures of our institutions 
do not end up just as dramas, but create reform opportunities that are pursued to the logical conclusions, while we punish those acts that we do not wish to encourage as a society. Yeah, I, I heard uh, Maisha laughing. I think, um, I don't know if she wants to start. No, but I just want to add one more. You know, you forgot about the one during the subsidy removal, um, you know, with Lawan and Otedola. What happened to that? Yeah, that was the money in the cap. The money in the cap. Oh, that was the money in the cap. You didn't want to give us names. No, I didn't want to oh, give us Oh, I'm sorry. Names. Okay, so now I've opened it all up. Yeah, no, I mean, this uh, uh, Aisha, is not Aisha, are you there? Do you, want, do you want to kick off this? Yes. <laughs> Go um, for it. Honestly, you know, um, when these things happen, and you don't know whether you want to laugh or you want to cry, that's the truth. And what you said about um, the popcorn, you know, really because you, we've become almost like uh, um, an audience, you know, uh, pretty much bystanders yeah. in our own lives. Yeah. These people are making decisions that affect us, that, um, you know, potentially will destroy our country. And um, every time there's an opportunity to make them accountable, you know, they start to faint, you know, um, all sorts of, you know, incredible things um, start to happen. It's really, really, really concerning. But I think that perhaps maybe what we need to do is put away the popcorn. I agree. We've been, you know, we've taken, we're sitting with the popcorn and we're looking and then we need to then get back into the, 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 the circus with them. You're right, and you're right. what really is the most important thing that we, even if we don't take a decision about anything in this country, is for all of us that were formerly bystanders to insist on a policy of zero tolerance for corruption. Fantastic. That's what it's all about. That really is what it's all about. Yes. Yeah, um, I, I want to also tie this advocacy to, you know, what Temeka has said. You know, it becomes a daily occurrence. Every day you hear, like a friend of mine, Ajima Ene said, you know, when um, that um, uh, NDDC scandal broke, he said, look, bros, this is uh, July season. By August now, another one will That's happen, and then, you know, we'll start another you. round of debate. And, no, and to solve all of this, Emeka has said, you know what, rise up, throw your heart in the ring. You need to be involved. The only way you can, you can take these decisions is if you are involved. You are not a human being until government says you are a human mm -hmm. being. You are not educated until government says you are educated. They yeah. take a certificate. You know? If government says you are dead, you are dead. Even if you are not dead. Even if you are not dead. <laughs> and so the only way you can you know, change some of these decisions is to be involved. And they wouldn't want you to be involved. That's why they tell you, oh, this thing is dirty, is uh, bad, is... You know, but I want all of us, all of us cannot be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we'll be shouting hallelujah. But we can be involved by ensuring that we vote the right people. We can be involved by ensuring that some of us, you know, we have to go into politics. We also can be, inv be involved by ensuring that also if any decision is taken that is not collectively favorable, we all come out and say, not necessarily fight. We just sit down and say, today, we know they go anywhere. We know mm. green. You know, all of those, these are ways you can be involved and then the society will be better. Mm. We should come out from our churches and mosques and begin to, you know, question decisions yeah. and not make excuses for government. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, like, I do feel like in, in this country, religion is like a drug that just dulls us down, dulls our senses down, takes away responsibility for where it's supposed to be placed. And so we're not, we're not doing anything. Everything is God will solve it, God will do this. Secondly, they have actually, they've done this quite cleverly. They keep creating all these dramas and they're wearing people like me and you down. So we've gotten to the point where we see a drama. I'm just, I remember the other day my mom was talking about, I can't even remember which one it was. Oh yes, it's the latest one about, um, Apparently, some governor or state governor is the leader of the, the book. book. Uh -huh. yeah. So my mom told me this. Of course, I just laughed. I said, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who is the governor? Yeah, go Are we ahead. ever going to find out who this governor is? Are we just, you know, they're just distracting us day in, day out. And people like me and you, we're tired. But we need to wake up. We need to realize that this is a tactic to basically keep us docile. And then we now need to all get involved. We need to understand this so, is a matter so, of life so and death. I agree. It's... it's it's ultimately important that we, we get engaged. But I, I just want to throw a little bit of a caveat around um, who is the we that's creating the drama. Okay. We are the ones. We like this kind of drama. We so the drama has been fed to yeah. us. I, I think that we need to yes. be, I, I just need to put that out there. 
um, because the people who uh, the the new cycle works in a way. This is the we talked about this um, off off camera, and that we live in a digital clutter. Mm -hmm. Everything is everything. So what is most entertaining, most shocking, is what we all gravitate towards. Um, but I think beyond that, the, the media, the people who run the media. Um, the unfortunate thing is that in Nigeria, people who run the media. Uh, are connected politically. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so it is down to, as someone said, there is no PD. PDP is not the opposition party. No. The opposition party in Nigeria is social media. Yes. Mm. And, 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 and so that's why you see all the attempts by this government to yes. try and clamp down on, on social media. On social media yeah, because social media is the opposition. Yeah. It's, uh, that, that's, and, and, and so we're left to that. But I, I think we need to get back to the point where um, we as a people need to continue this engagement. And, and, and my only True. way of looking at it is, is the enlightened self-interest of, of, of our NGOs. Yeah. They are the ones who actually will, will save us in, in this respect. But that's it for me. Yeah, thanks, Emeka. Um, in the spirit of all for one and one for all, and as we have just celebrated International Youth Week, I'll be saying, Liburos, yo. Yo, Bola, Bola, no, I'm saying, eh? That's how we roll. Let's roll now. <laughs>